In this video, I'm going to show how to import orders from a CSV file. The orders will have payments that basically come from something like eBay or Amazon or an external system where you've handled the credit card payment already. And also, often a problem with this sort of import is that the external system slightly calculated the VAT differently to Sage, thus causing rounding problems. So the idea is also you bring everything in with inclusive of VAT and Posttrans then calculates everything backwards to arrive at a net price. So here I am in Excel, I'm going to click on the Sage 50 toolbar and go to the help menu and if I type pay in here you can see here we have an example it's called import file orders from CSV file with payment rounding and extra charges so I'm just going to double click on that to open it. So here you can see we already have some data in there but I'm going to press the clear button to just clear that down. And really what you would do is save this in this state so someone could open it very easily and import the data. And I'm going to show how easy it is to import that data. I'm just going to roll the delivery address up here. So what's going to happen here, when I press this file button here, and you can set this in the settings, you just set the row you want it to go into, um, the column, and it brings in a CSV file. So I'm just going to, and you can also set filters and make it archive files to a different folder and all that sort of business. I'm just going to double click on that and you can see it's brought it in. Now, the great beauty of Posttrans is that uh, it's basically brought in this block of data and, and, and the delivery address, but I'm just going to pretend the delivery address isn't there just to explain this point. Because what you can do is you can go over here and you can easily map Sage fields on the right hand side. So if you want to include some user fields or whatever you can bring them in but you can also put formula down here based on the data you've imported so you can do extra calculations so you could basically decide the nominal count based on some code that's in there um, maybe the VAT code in your external system is completely different again you can put a formula down here to manipulate it and effectively, once you've arrived at a formula, say if you put it in that cell there and you copy it to this row here, Posttrans will always copy that down on a clear or an import of a file. So, very powerful feature because it allows you to populate the data. There's a whole training course. You need to really watch the training course on transactions, which probably explain a little bit more in depth that functionality. Okay, let's talk about the file here. So you can see here it's brought in sales orders with a date and account code. We're booking here to two accounts. And basically Posttrans goes down looking for a difference in a date, a difference in the account code or reference to decide on how many transactions to post. As you can see here, the first two rows has got a transaction reference followed by four followed by three, etc. So that would break that down into separate transactions. Then obviously we've got a product, we've also got a comment, we can put service charges in, very simply, any explanation. I think there's a tick box in settings where basically the product description either comes from Sage or it comes from this column here. The idea of this layout is that you can put header fields up here and the tags in row 28 denote the data. So you can see there TL description, TL product, customer reference, which are all accessible by this tags button up here. Anyway, moving on to the point of this whole sheet is that basically uh, we have an amount paid for each line. So you can see here they paid £40 for whatever was on this line. It's a standard keyboard. They bought one and it was £24. Now the carriage was £6 and the insurance was £10. Now you can create up to four extra charges in here. And these are booked to any non-stock item that you define in this header here. So the idea is it will add up any value. So you could express it at the bottom. You could actually put it actually in as a stock code. But often, if it is in each row of the data, it would be very, very difficult to kind of code it because you could either add it up or put it in and manipulate the sheet. So the whole idea of this was to say, OK, this line adds up to £40. Um, there's the insurance that and the total for the line. Now they're inclusive of VAT so it's going to work all that backwards based on this VAT code here. So if the VAT code is zero, i.e. Um, non-VATable, then 
all of the line will have no VAT on it. Now, if it's tax code one, it will say, OK, that's tax code one for these items. But the tax for the extra items is actually derived by whatever the tax code is set on the non-stock item. So the carriage here. So if you had, I don't know, VAT at 8% for insurance, say, for some reason, then it would calculate that correctly. So now let's press the import button. And now you can see here it's read um, the first two rows because it's put one and two there. And we can see here the total was £40 less £5 discount because we're actually accounting for discount over here. And there's a breakdown of all the charges. So you can see here the insurance, which was £10. It's worked out the VAT backwards. Everything balances, so we can just post that transaction. And if we want, instead of seeing this, we can just say don't ask again. It will just sit there and post all the transactions into Sage. And if we go over here, we can see the reference that they were put in. So we can see here there the sales order and the payment on account, which paid for the transaction. Let's just have a look at the first one. That's SOR31. That would be that one there, £40. So we can see here we accounted for some discount also. Now, the discount uh, is not taken off the values. It's kind of added as a bit of analysis to the bottom there. But there we can see we paid £25 for, for that. £4 VAT. So that was £25 all-inclusive VAT. £24 inclusive VAT. Um, yeah, sorry, £24 because it's... Two, Two at 24 and 5 and 1 makes 6 and I believe that adds up to 10 so you've got there your, your 24, your 6 and your 10 and of course if we look at, look at the next transaction which is a little bit more complicated I think that had 4 lines on it so there we start off at uh, £4.80, 24 7 20 etc but you can see here the carriage was a series of two pounds so that should add up to eight pounds so I'm just going to switch back again to Sage 50 let's just pull that one up that's the 53 I believe so here we've got the carriage express so you see it's added it up so there's six pounds 68 net and uh, one pound 72 uh, tax now of course it's also posted an SA transaction which is a um, Sale, uh, sales receipt on account so there's uh, a sales receipt there for £40 and of course the second transaction was 53.60. so if I just double click on one of those you'll see there there should be a credit there sitting on the account to be used later now of course we didn't discuss actually how the file import mechanism works with Impost Trans let's just quickly go through that so if I go to the setup button here you can see here we can select the company it's posting into. We can check for updates and uh, access our billing information so we can manage our account from within here. But also there's a tab here that says Import File. It says Import File into Column B. So we simply set Column B and of course the data starts at row 30 so naturally the data needs to go into Column B and that hunk of data goes in and like I say it doesn't touch the right hand side. So that imports into column B and uh, onwards. Now we can set skip first line. If we've got some headings in there, we can change the delimiters and the text qualifiers. Uh, well, but we can also put in a nice, a nice filter so we only see the files of a certain matching uh, name. Uh, we can set here the directory it's going to import files from. And also, once on a successful import, it can actually move the files to a different directory so we don't process them again. Plus, we can also run a batch file. Uh, every time we run a file import or the first time only. So when you open it, it will say get everything, say, from an F through an FTP routine. This is multiple files. You may only want that to run once, or you may want it to run every time you open or run the operation. So I think we can see that's um, quite comprehensive. Anyway, I think that caters for uh, quite a lot of functionality in one little sheet.